Hello, I'm Jeff Halbrin, the Director of Strategic Development at BioClinica. Today we're going to start a series of discussions on blood pressure monitoring and clinical trials. Our topic for today is taking a look at the basics with ABPM. So to start things off, I wanted to give you a visual picture of what that blood pressure looked like and the data coming from an ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. These two graphic displays show both a normal uh, circadian rhythm profile as well as one that we'll get to that talks about, in fact, the non-dipper approach. But let's focus on the graphic display on the left-hand side of your screen. What you can see here, again, is that 24-hour circadian profile, the x-axis being the time of day, the y-axis being the blood pressure in millimeters of mercury, each individual line representing a blood pressure reading with the top of the line being the systolic pressure and the bottom of the line being the diastolic and the points beneath each line being the heart rate represented at that blood pressure reading. So you can see that during the day this individual's blood pressure is somewhat normal to elevated. It does represent a normal dipping effect or dropping of the blood pressure as we head into the evening time point and sleep time as well as then that early morning rise when the individual's blood pressure does go up based upon physiological as well as positional changes as they start their day. So you can see right off the bat the strength of this. You can take a look at the daytime data, you can take a look specifically at the nighttime data, and of course you can take a look at the overall 24-hour profile. This information gives a great deal of insight both into the status of the individual's blood pressure as well as if we're looking at compounds in development, the change in blood pressure that in fact can be associated with the compound from a safety perspective or if in the development of a hypertension drug, the control of the blood pressure. Each time having the ability to do a comparison to what would be considered a baseline reading. So it provides very valuable information and insight which you cannot get from other methodologies of blood pressure assessment such as office or home blood pressure. Over on the right hand side I did want to provide a representation again of a circadian profile but in fact with this profile you do not see that dipping effect. And that's a key consideration and again wanted to highlight the benefit as it shows that nighttime data which is not available just taking a look at clinic based blood pressure which has always been a primary consideration for both safety and efficacy endpoints. One of the strengths again of using ABPM uh, in assessing blood pressure as you saw on the graphic displays is that 24 hour profile and with that we can set the ABPM devices across an entire protocol and across all patients to be standardized in its inflation sequence so that you have consistency across the daytime and nighttime as to the number of inflations per hour. This again is a strength when using ABPM in clinical trials because you reduce the variability in the blood pressure assessment and again standardize the capture uh, of the, the readings during the hourly process. You get a great deal of strength looking at the high number of BP readings over that 24-hour period. Uh, with this, you're able to see any changes associated with the blood pressure. Again, from a hypertension development research, you can see the control or the efficacy of the blood pressure. And if, in fact, you're looking to define maybe the off-target effect of that blood pressure response, you're able to see that over that circadian period and even be able to see a time match from dose. Which brings us to that bullet point associated with time match BP readings very similar to what we've seen in the world of the QT assessment, there is a great deal of interest in uh, identifying an early phase development, that blood pressure response. And with that, using the ABPM, you can do corresponding blood pressure readings associated with PK data, again, assisting in developing, in fact, if there is a concentration effect related to that blood pressure response. Of course, always a value in the clinical research environment is to see if there is, in fact, a dose response and the ability to do that comparison to baseline. Now, ABPM provides additional value in identifying patient populations. So if you're developing a hypertension drug and you wanted to properly identify the patient population based upon mean values, this is a great tool. Uh, in many cases, it's been used, in fact, to rule out the white coat hypertensive response where in fact people may have elevated blood pressure readings in the clinic setting, but when, when they wear the ABPM, the blood pressure response is quite different. And in fact, by using the ABPM during screening and using a mean 24 hour or a mean daytime value, helps identify the population quite well, specifically if you're looking to develop a hypertension drug or identify efficacy with a study compound. 
So let's summarize uh, what we talked about today. And again, uh, we'll continue these discussions in, in, in more presentations. But the first point again to highlight is that ABPM clearly is a valuable tool in defining the blood pressure profile and response for both efficacy and safety endpoints. So again, we will have continued discussions on blood pressure assessment in the clinical trial research environment. I'd like to thank you for joining this discussion today and look forward to speaking with you soon.